Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, we are doing more GeoGebra, this time with vectors. I found that GeoGebra actually makes using vectors fairly intuitive and convenient. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make vectors in GeoGebra, as well as how to do some of the usual vector operations. All right, let's do it. So I'm in GeoGebra. I'm gonna show you how to do things with vectors in both 2D and 3D. The way it works is kind of the same, but we'll be jumping back and forth so I can kind of show you what it looks like. All right, to start, let's make a vector. So we go over to our input bar and we're gonna make a new vector, let's call it U. One way to make a vector in GeoGebra is just to type the word vector. And we can even see as we type that, it's suggesting pretty much the two ways that we'll make vectors. One of them is to just provide a point. So let's say we wanna make a vector using the point one comma two. If we do that and hit enter, you can see it makes the vector for us here. It writes it in column notation and it draws that vector on the page. Let's make another vector. We'll call it V and it'll be the vector that points from the origin to the point negative three, one. And just real quick, let's adjust some of these things about these vectors. Let's move the labels so they're kind of off to the side. If I single click one of the vectors, I can adjust the size of it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. That looks good. And we can change the color. Now let's go back to our input bar over here on the right. And we'll make another vector, we'll call it W. And let's use this second form. So this autocomplete is sort of suggesting for us what it'll do. If we put in two points into our vector function, it'll draw that vector with its tail at the first point and its tip at the second point. So let's draw the vector that points from the point one, two, to the point negative three, one. There we go. One, two, and negative three, one were the input points for their first two vectors. And so we've drawn sort of the uh, third side of this triangle here. So that's essentially how we make vectors. One way is to just put in a point and it'll draw the vector that points from the origin to that point. Or you can put in two points and it'll draw the vector from the first point to the second point. Let's see how all of this works in 3D. Since I'm using the calculator suite, I can just click the drop down here and go to 3D calculator. So we'll make a new vector in the same way. We'll call it U again, and we'll make it the vector that points from the origin to the point one, two, three. If we do that, it does, it makes the 3D vector and it draws it here for us. Just like before we can click, make it bigger if we want, change the color. And just for the sake of example, if we wanted a vector that points between two points, we can do the same thing. We could put in the point, say one, two, three, and the point negative one, zero, one. Hit enter, and it tells us what vector that is, and it draws it here in the 3D view for us. So pretty much everything that worked in 2D also works in 3D. Let's switch back to what we had in the 2D calculator by clicking the drop down up here and going back to graphing. And let's hide this vector W here just for a second. And let's talk about vector operations. Now that we have two vectors, U and V, what can we do with them? Well, it turns out that GeoGebra is pretty intuitive about the way that you interact with vectors. Pretty much any operation you're used to doing with vectors, you know, with pen and paper, you can do in GeoGebra. For instance, let's take these two vectors, u and v, and add them. So if I just go to the input bar and type u plus v, it will add them and tell us what vector that is if I hit enter. And then it'll also draw that vector for us in the view. Now let's delete this. We can also subtract vectors. So we could say, let's make a new vector that is v minus u. It'll draw that vector there. If we hit enter, this vector is v minus u, Remember from vector geometry, if we were writing the vector V minus U, that should be the same as the vector drawn from the tip of U to the tip of V. That's actually the same as that vector W we had before. So if I bring that back, we can see these two vectors are the same, like they're the same arrow pointing in the same direction. And indeed GeoGebra is treating them as the same vector. So even though they look different, in the way they're drawn, GeoGebra really thinks of them as the same vector, and any mathematical operation that we would do with this vector W or this vector A would turn out the same independent of which of the two we used. So we'll get rid of this and hide this again. Now let's talk about scalar multiplication. Um, it works pretty much the way you want it to. If you want to take this vector U and make a new vector that's twice as long, you can really just type 2U. And there you go. If you hit enter, it'll do the computation for you and show you the result. And of course, also draw 
the vector. And there's really no limit in terms of like what you can do here with scalar multiplication and addition. Like if you wanted to just write a linear combination of these two vectors, like three U plus one half V and hit enter, there you go. It'll compute it for you. It'll draw it for you here. It all works. And I'm not gonna show it, but you can take my word for it that doing these kinds of operations, addition and scalar multiplication in 3D with 3D vectors would work just the same. So let's get rid of these. And let's talk about some other vector operations that we do, such as the dot product. There's a couple ways to do the dot product if you have two vectors. Probably the easiest way to remember is just to type in the word dot. And GeoGebra confirms this is an actual thing that we do. If we put in parentheses u and v, it'll compute the dot product, which of course is just a number. It's not going to show anything for you in your view here, but it computes the dot product. I really don't like that it writes it as uv. That's not really great in terms of just like how I think mathematical notation should work, but oh well. All right, so let's get rid of this. And another way to get to dot products that's a little bit more in line with how we'd write them notationally would be to write something like u and then I'm gonna press shift and eight, which is the asterisk key. And when I do, it'll put a little dot there, which is convenient. If I then put in v, it'll, it'll compute the dot product and it writes it with that same crappy notation, but whatever. So that's the dot product. It works for 2D vectors and 3D vectors in exactly the same way. Lastly, let's talk about the cross product. And for that, of course, we're gonna have to go to our 3D calculator, which has these two vectors from before. I'm gonna get rid of this one and make a new vector v that's drawn just with its base at the origin. How about negative one, zero, one. All right, so for the cross product, you can do it in two ways, just like the dot product. You can type in cross and then put in the two vectors that you want to cross and hit enter. It computes the cross product for you and it draws that vector in the 3D view. And you can kind of rotate the view around and confirm to yourself that this black vector is actually the vector that you think it should be. It's the vector that is perpendicular to both U and V, and it points in the correct direction based on the right-hand rule, all that stuff. And notice that uh, GeoGebra uses this kind of funky cross product notation here, this uh, circle with an X in it. If you wanted to get the same thing, you know, if you want to do the analogy of using the asterisk for dot product, let's see, we can type in U, and then we can go to the keyboard down here, go to the symbols pane and I think, yeah, here it is. So you just click that and then V, then hit enter. That's kind of a pain in the butt, but you can do it. And lastly, if you wanna remember this, you can, you can type in U and you can get that same symbol, it turns out, by typing shift, alt, and eight at the same time. So it's the asterisk key, but you're pressing down the alt key or option key at the same time. You get the same symbol. There you go. You can compute the cross product that way. So if you're doing a project that involves a lot of cross products for some reason, maybe you'll want to use that hotkey. Other than that, I usually just do the word cross and then followed by the two vectors in parentheses. Okay, so I have just one more thing to tell you about, which is a little bit about how GeoGebra treats vectors and points. To show you that, I'm gonna go back to our 2D view and let's get rid of everything. Now in math, sometimes it's useful for us to conflate the idea of a point and a vector because sometimes we think of vectors as like directions, but other times we think of vectors as representing locations. Now, GeoGebra does a pretty good job of letting you move fluidly between points and vectors. So let me show you a bit about how that works. First of all, Remember how we created a vector the first time by doing vector, the word, and then one, and then the point one, two? It turns out we didn't need to type the word vector there. We could have just said u equals one, two, and it makes a vector for us. Now, that might be a little surprising because it looked like I was going to be making a point one comma two, but actually it turns out, and I actually just found this out while making this video, if we were to type something like capital A is the point, one, two, then it actually makes the point one comma two. Now, the difference between the two things that I entered, I entered u equals parentheses one, two, and a equals parentheses one, two. The primary difference was I used a lowercase letter and got a vector and an uppercase letter and got the point. And that's the rule. 
Lowercase gives you vectors, uppercase gives you points. That works even if the variable name that you're using is more than one letter. So if I wanted to make a vector named Drew, uh, that'll be the vector that points from the origin to the point three comma three, it'll make the vector. But if I use a capital D instead, it'll make the point. So this is a little bit suggesting that GeoGebra thinks of points and vectors as pretty much the same thing. And actually, everything that we could do with vectors, we can also do with points. So I have a point A, which is one, two. Let's say we make the point B, which is negative three comma one. We can do all of the things with these points A and B that we did with the vectors U and V from before. So we can add them. We get the point negative two, three, which would be the same as if we had added the vector one, two to the vector negative three, one. We would have gotten the vector that pointed from the origin to the point negative two, three. So you can add points, you can scalar multiply points, just like they were vectors, and you can even take the dot product of two points and it computes the dot product as if they were vectors. So that's just to show you that there's a lot of flexibility here. And like in a situation like multivariable calculus, where sometimes a vector is a position and sometimes a vector is like a tangent vector, like a direction, being able to go back and forth between thinking of it as a point or as a vector is really convenient. All right, so there you have it. Now you're ready to do all of the fun things that we do in mathematics with vectors, like drawing tangent vectors on parametrized curves or vector fields or line integrals. There's so many things now that you can visualize and even compute if you're clever in GeoGebra. If you're interested in seeing a video on any of those things, let me know down in the comments. And also, of course, as always, let me know if you have any questions about anything that we talked about in this video. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I'll see you in the next video.